Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing? If you join for morning prayer, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Seems like morning prayer is starting to get a lot more attention, and that's good. It's blessing people, and I hope everybody's getting blessed from it. Because if we don't stop what we're doing every day, every day, and take some time to tithe time to the Lord, um, everybody wants you know a lot or a lot, a lot of people want to talk about tithing, but they always forget that. God requires your time also, 2.4 hours a day. But put all that aside, if, if we don't stop and take time to glorify God, to give Him thanks, to praise Him, to ask for things, um, which is all throughout the New Testament, the whole Bible, how are we ever going to have a clear relationship and communication with Him? We can't. There are prayers that people do them, they, they say them, and when you get further along, in discernment you start to sense the kind of prayers I'm talking about but they'll they'll say the prayer like they're speaking into a box and then when they're done they close it up tape it shut put God's address on it and send it off in the mail very unpersonal but those who are genuinely reaching out think father talk to me Lord communicate with me it flows out of them and flows out personal goes straight up to them, like they're standing at the front door or on the phone with them, talking to them. You can tell which ones are which, which ones are really from the heart and which ones aren't. Uh, this prayer, that doesn't mean anything. This prayer is the one he hears because it's coming from your spirit, not from, just from your mouth. So it's important for us to stay in, in prayer to him. You guys are joining me for morning prayer? Awesome. I'm glad I'm able to lead people in prayer. I'm glad I'm able to bless people with something like that. It's not for my glory. It's for His glory and His glory only because He's the one that pushed me to do that. The short story behind doing morning prayer was I have this little electric fireplace over here and I was actually going to do Psalms read by firelight as a separate video playlist. <clears throat> and I tried to do a couple of videos and it never would work right. And I don't know what happened. I don't remember what led me to it. Um, but it ended up one morning I just decided to do morning prayer and it's been like that ever since every morning so uh, every morning but, but one I did it in the afternoon so that's a good thing to open the day with prayer <laughs> because you never know when you might reach somebody with something in that prayer some people really connect with that kind of stuff and it, the sheep need to be fed I'm not a great shepherd. I'm not learned. I uh, don't know any of this stuff, but he called me up to do this. And this has become my life now, and I love it. Um, I'm glad I'm able to do some small thing to help people out there. I know I'm not perfect at it, absolutely not perfect at it. But every time he shows me something, I'm sharing it with you guys. Every time something jumps out, I'm sharing it with you guys. He pushed me to do all those playlists, Psalms, or Proverbs small books of the Bible, that kind of stuff. And it's been developing and it's been coming together. People are starting to get caught up in it. And that's good. I like that. I'm glad that it's a blessing to somebody. Now, for the subject of this video, since I went on that rant, <clears throat> if you guys watched the video I put up last night, um, we were kind of laughing at somebody's video uh, about the misconception that's going around, really bad misconception going around, that the bride of Christ is one woman. All of these people have missed Ephesians 5 completely missed Ephesians 5 and just a second here I want to show you something I've got dog hair all over me we're in Romans 14 okay so do that so in Ephesians 5 and this is I've already proved this a couple of times but let's just recap real quick so everybody knows where we're at. Because there's some people that are new to the channel that haven't seen any of this stuff. So when we're reading Ephesians 5, the whole first part of it is talking about our walk as Christians. And how we are to be with each other. Uh, actually, the first half up to verse 21 is very eye-opening. Then it starts talking about wives and husbands from verse 22 on down. And it, it's talking about a wife and a husband, a bride and a bridegroom. Then, verse 32, and I guess people don't make it this far, it says, this mystery is profound. And I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. So what he's talking about, 
And they always take me back to Revelations 19, which Revelations 19 is being taken out of context. <coughs> the video I did breaking that down showed in the Strong's, the Greek used for her in Revelations 19 refers to a group of people. And it actually refers to a whole bunch of different things, but not just singular. It's, it's compound. So they, they miss the understanding because they don't dig deeper. They, they read it and go, that's it, and take it completely out of context. Now, that's my segue into what we're going to talk about in this video. But go read Ephesians 5, and it tells you exactly who the church or the, the bride is. It's the church, and that's us. There's still people that think it's the 144,000. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Nowhere. They think it's the holy city Jerusalem, so Jesus is going to marry a city. No. Read that scripture. It says the city is adorned like a bride. Got to look at the keywords in that stuff. Okay. And we may go touch on that some other time. But I want to cover this because this is a great example of what I'm talking about. The, the bride issue being just one of them. Somebody, uh, David Benjamin put up a video this morning and somebody at the end of the comment section had said, give me your thoughts on Romans 14, 12. And tell me what you think about that. And I saw that and when I see stuff like that, sometimes it seems like it's a setup. And I went and looked at it and I think that person may be trying to set him up. When you read Romans 14, 12, it's here highlighted on the screen. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. To me, reading that, that person is trying to set him up. And I hope he catches it. I, I know David's smart enough to catch it. But you can't read that one verse and not read the five below it that pertain to it. Therefore, verse 13, let us not pass judgment. Because you see, therefore, that's, that's continuing the thought. Let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. If we put that stumbling block in there, so then each of us will give an account of himself to God. God's going to ask us about that. Let's keep going because there's four other verses. I know and I'm persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. But it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what your, you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, don't do something if it's causing your brother to stumble. Like there's a couple of times, because um, every now and then because of the pain that I'm in, I drink a little bit of alcohol to um, ease the pain. It's the only thing that's worked. It doesn't take it all away, but it eases it. A lot of people have a problem with that. And I realized I can't be doing that on camera. I did it, I think, once or twice. Uh, just took a sip. Um, I can't do that on camera because it's causing my brother to stumble. And I explained about alcohol in the Bible and stuff like that. And how uh, where it's, it's only a sin if it leads to a certain point. But people are still going to stumble at that. I don't do that anymore. Um, and there's other things that I uh, change the words on a little bit to keep people from stumbling. Well, that's what this is talking about here. If you put a stumbling block before your brother, person, because Christ died for everybody, then that's what you're going to be giving an account of. Why did you do this and cause your brother to do this? Why did you do that and cause your brother to do that? You set up a failure for that. <clears throat> now, that's not saying that we, we're going to get a punishment for it, but we may have to answer for it. Why did you do that when you knew better? You know, that kind of thing. Because if there's no condemnation... There's not going to be a punishment for that stuff. may lose some rewards or something like that. But this is a great example of people taking things out of context. You can't just give an opinion on Romans 14, 12 without reading the next five verses down to verse 17. It, and that's what the whole problem is. And I keep trying to point this out to these other people who are, are completely... Rhonda Empson, Joan Martin. The, the, Rhonda supports Joan, by the way. Found that out this morning um, by her comments. They take so much stuff out of context and then get mad when somebody points to the, some of this stuff out to them. If you're going to say you're a Christian, you can't get mad at these things. When somebody shows you something, go investigate it. This person mentioned this, I investigated it, and now I'm doing a video on this because I want to show how this works. That person has probably never read any more than one verse above and maybe one verse below. That scripture. Because somebody reminded them of that scripture, 
and said, this is what you have to abide by. These people are cursed because of this. They went and read that, and then now they're using that to try to cause more division. Maybe they don't even realize they're doing it. But when you read further, you get the context of it. And the context of Romans 14, 12 is if you do something that causes your brother to stumble, you're going to have to give an account to God for that. Not for, not for condemnation, but you're, he's going to probably ask you, why did you do that for, to your brother? I know I've got things I'm going to have to answer for. Not for punishment, but I'm going to have to answer for those things and tell him why I did it. And it's not a terrible thing. It's not a bad thing. But we all are going to go through some type of judgment. So when you keep going, it gives you more context of what that verse 12 is talking about. Who, verse 18, whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. So he's telling us to be careful what we're doing and look at the things and go, Is this, can I make peace with this? Okay, then I'll pursue that. If I can't make peace with it, I'm not going to do that. That's why so many grace preachers are so leery about calling out names, but sometimes you have to. It's unfortunate, but some people have gone so far off the rails and absolutely completely walking with their head in a paper bag, not seeing where they're going. You have to call this stuff out. Not for the fact of pointing that person out, but for the fact of keeping people from getting caught up in that deception. Because what they say sounds pretty good, and it's not. So he's telling us to watch what we're doing. Pay attention that you don't do or say something that's going to cause a brother or sister to stumble. And basically, I mean, brothers and sisters are others that believe but you don't know who believes and doesn't believe. You don't know what's in their heart. All you can go by is what they're saying and, and watch what they're doing. So we have to try to not do that stuff. So let's keep reading. We want to read in context. Verse 20, do not for the sake of food destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. Verse 21, it is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves, but whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So when you're judging yourself, this is part of working out your salvation. When you're judging yourself and you're putting restrictions on yourself, if you engage out in one of those restrictions and now you have a guilty conscience from it, it's become sin for you because you violated what you put on yourself. Now, we're not bound by laws anymore. We're not bound by statutes anymore, according to the law. We, in Christ, we're all free and we have liberty. We have liberty to eat pork. We have liberty to eat shellfish. We have liberty to eat fish without scales. We have liberty to um, drink alcohol. We have liberty to eat, you know, everything. But... If you do it with a guilty conscience, it has become sin for you. And like what he's saying in verse 22 here, the faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. Contemplate what that's saying. A lot of people put a heavy amount of restrictions. A lot of people put a heavy amount of restrictions on themselves when they come to Christ, especially new believers. That's why two and a half to three year mark, they get very um, condemning and very, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Not legalistic, they get legalistic. Maybe it's self-righteous. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the word I'm looking for. But um, because they're, they're putting themselves under judgment and condemnation, trying to walk according to what they think, rightly with God. With more study of the Word, because I used to do that, more study of the Word, you learn it's not about those things. So as your confidence grows, these things that you allow in, in Christ no longer become a sin to you because there's no condemnation with that in yourself. There's no self-judgment on these things. I have a couple of things that I judge myself harshly on. But as time is going on, I'm realizing it's not about that. It's not about my judgment. It's about his judgment. 
and there's a lot here there's a lot of meat here some of it's pretty tough meat to chew but if you can handle meat and potatoes you got to get into the meat and potatoes L look and listen and think about what these things are referring to and don't just take one one or two verses go look at other verses too so again verse 12 you can't just read verse 12 and say hey what's your opinion on verse 12 you have to keep going all the way down and read until it's it changes the thought to a different thought and then you get it in context then you get a better idea of so then each of us will give an account of himself to god why did you do that why did you do that why did you do that and with more study you find out what the answer is when you're asked why did you do that so go read the top part of it and it gives you even more about passing judgment on another so read everything in context one verse does not a doctrine make when you if somebody gives you a verse like uh, Rhonda Empson gave me two verses one out of Colossians oh no uh, Galatians 6 no oh yeah it was Galatians 6 and Galatians Galatians 5 and 6 a verse out of each one and she says, that's what we're talking about. And that means it absolutely is the furthest thing from what they're talking about in that video that Joan did. She's taken out of context. But that's another example. I take one verse here, I take one verse here, and we'll build a doctrine on it. No, you have to read both those verses in context before you can develop an understanding of what they're talking, talking about. Because just these words right here, say you don't see nothing else but Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. The implications behind just that sentence are staggering. Oh, well, that's, I've got all kinds of stuff I'm going to have to answer for. And you start self-condemning. Now you've turned those things into sin that weren't sin before. Because sin isn't imputed onto us anymore. We have liberty, the law of liberty. We are free. But when you read this in context, you see it, there, it is referring to a completely different scenario than what our imagination gives us. This is why you have to read in context. If anybody ever gives you a verse, oh, well, go read this verse. Okay. Like when I'd been telling people about Ephesians 5, I could tell them, go read Ephesians 5.32. That doesn't put that, that whole thing in context. You've got to read the whole thing. Then you have context. So I tell them, go read Ephesians 5. I always try to give people either a group of scriptures or an entire chapter. Go read the whole thing so you get it in context. And there's even some of these chapters where it's three chapters create the context. So you have to study. You have to read. This is why I harp, and other grace creatures are harping, read your Bible. You need to be deep in these scriptures, learning everything you can learn. I show you guys, as much as I am able to, I show you guys on the screen how I do it. Esword, free to download. Over here, Open Bible. Open Bible is free, and you can link it. You can save it as one of your favorites. I got it right here. Then you go into the search bar, and you just type in the search bar what you're looking for and let it bring up scriptures. And then you just scroll through, and any scriptures that jump out at you go, I need to go look at that one. Let's see. Let's say Order of Melchizedek. Hebrew 7.4. I need to look deeper into Hebrews 7.4. Well, then you run over to your Bible app or to eSword, and you just go into Hebrews 7.4. There's the verse I found. Now I'm going to read this verse in context. Then you just read the whole thing. Really expands your understanding, and it clarifies a lot of things for you. A lot of people struggle with clarity. But when you do that, when you take the time to read through that, you get a much clearer, much better understanding. All these other people who are caught up in all these deceptions, it's because they don't read enough of the scripture. They go find someone else, they get a couple of scriptures, and that's what they build their doctrine on, and they never get any further than that. And that's what's unfortunate, is they, they never grow past that. And in fact, I was just looking at some scripture that talks about, it's in Hebrews 6, I think. No. I forgot what 
chapter it was, something. Well, here's warning against neglecting salvation. But there was another one. Eight. Where is it at? It's a warning against... I don't know where it is now. I had to go dig it up. But it was a warning against... Um, not never growing any further never advancing in your faith and that's what's happened with these people is they hit a certain point and they stopped and never went any further I talked about that in a couple of videos so when you're given a verse or when somebody mentions a verse uh, in a video this is one of the reasons why I give so much scripture when they mention a verse in a video pause the video go look up that verse read that verse in context God's truth then go finish listening to their video. And if they tell you something that doesn't match what the context of that is, because they're putting their own understanding on that verse, you've got a problem with this person that's teaching this. They're not teaching it from Scripture. My videos are 20, 30, 45 minutes long because I'm covering Scripture in depth to give you guys the clear understanding from the Bible, not my understanding. I don't want to put my understanding in this. That's why I share so much scripture. It's hard for people to refute what I'm sharing because there's so much scripture in here. That's why a lot of them don't either don't comment or um, unsub and go somewhere else. And that's okay. But if we want to say we're walking in truth, you've got to read. Read, read, read over and over and over again. You've constantly got to be pouring over these. Because I can go through Hebrews 5 and then in a month come back and read Hebrews 5 again and get something totally different. New revelations will pop out of that of those script, scriptures. You're not ready for all of it at one time, and it takes time before you're ready. And when you are, he shows you more stuff. And it's amazing to see it. How long have people been reading the book of Ruth and didn't know what it was talking about? Then all of a sudden you go read it, and it's like, well, wait a minute. I see what that's referring to. Yep, happens a lot. The book of Micah. <laughs> the Amos. All kinds of revelations coming out of those. Daniel. Great example. So anyway, that's the, the point that I wanted to get across on this. Um, I'm not talking about that person down about them. Just pointing out that if you're going to, if you're going to ask an opinion about one verse, you have to remember all the rest of the verses that are associated with that verse. What is the context that that verse is being spoken in? Just to read that verse standalone with nothing else all by itself. That has implications that go all across the board. But when you read it in context in all of Romans 14, then you understand what that's referring to. Giving an account for what? And that should be what you add in there. So then each of us will give an account, comma, of what, comma, of himself to God. What are we giving an account for? Read further down the rest of the passages from 13 on, and you understand what it's giving an account of. And read from reading above it. Do not pass judgment on one another. Don't do that because that you may have to give an account for because you're passing judgment on people. I try not to ever pass judgment on somebody's salvation. But if the doctrine is wrong, it has to be brought out in the open. Because that way people are warned and they don't get caught up in deception. Because then if they go, they can't go back and say, well, you didn't warn me. Mm, yeah, I did. So anyway, guys, study, study, study. Be careful. Guard yourselves. There's a new crop of either false believers or false teachers that are coming up right now that are starting to do videos and their doctrine is completely wrong and taken out of context it's not God's truth it's their truth be careful don't listen to them I'm a watchman I'm sounding the alarm the other watchmen are sounding the alarm all the grace teachers are sounding the alarm be careful be careful be careful I love you guys I bless you all in Jesus name I'll see you in the next one